Mars once ran red with rivers. The telltale tracks of past rivers, streams, and lakes are visible today all over the planet. But about 3 billion years ago, they all dried up, and no one knows why. Now, scientists and researchers are trying to find out answers to these questions by setting different missions on Mars. So, let's talk about it. Welcome to Space World. In today's video, we are going to talk about why did Mars dry out and some unusual answers pointed out by the new study. So if you want to know more about it, then stay with us until the end of the video. The search for life on Mars has become more urgent thanks in part to probes by the two rovers now roaming Mars's surface and another spaceship that is orbiting the planet. In recent months, they've made a series of astonishing discoveries that once again tempt scientists to believe that Mars harbors life, or did so in the past. So, the first concrete demonstration that life exists or existed elsewhere in the universe will be a momentous day in the history of science. Although that day is not yet here, it may be close. Science has long claimed that life could arise elsewhere in the universe, and was largely convinced until the 1960s that a form of plant life existed on Mars. The pendulum then swung in the opposite direction. The Viking mission to Mars in 1976 seemed to show clearly that there is no life on the planet, and that present conditions preclude the possibility that new life could arise there. But did the planet ever harbor life? Recently, NASA scientists described dramatic new evidence that a simple form of life existed on Mars about three and a half billion years ago. As humans vie to become an interplanetary species, Mars will be the first target. But before first humans arrive, we need to know everything about the planet. And the biggest question remains, how did a planet that was once rife with water and flowing rivers become the bone-dry wasteland it is today? People have put forward ideas, but we're not sure what caused the climate to change so dramatically," said University of Chicago geophysical scientist Edwin Kite. We'd really like to understand, especially because it's the only planet we definitely know changed from habitable to uninhabitable. Kite is the first author of a new study that examines the tracks of Martian rivers to see what they can reveal about the history of the planet's water and atmosphere. Previously, many scientists had assumed that losing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, which helped to keep Mars warm, caused the trouble. But the new findings published in Science Advances suggest that the change was caused by the loss of some other important ingredient that maintained the planet warm enough for running water. But we still don't know what that is. Water, water everywhere, and not a drop to drink. In 1972, scientists were astonished to see pictures from NASA's Mariner 9 mission as it circled Mars from orbit. The photos revealed a landscape full of riverbeds, evidence that the planet once had plenty of liquid water, even though it's dry as a bone today. Since Mars doesn't have tectonic plates to shift and bury the rock over time, ancient river tracks still lie on the surface, like evidence abandoned in a hurry. This allowed Kite and his collaborators, including University of Chicago graduate student Bowen Fan, as well as scientists from the Smithsonian Institution, Planetary Science Institute, California Institute of Technology, Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and Aeolus Research, to analyze maps based on thousands of pictures taken from orbits by satellites. Based on which tracks overlap which, and how weathered they are, the team pieced together a timeline of how river activity changed in elevation and latitude over billions of years. Then they could combine that with simulations of different climate conditions and see which matched best. Planetary climates are enormously complex, with many, many variables to account for, especially if you want to keep your planet in the Goldilocks zone, where it's exactly warm enough for water to be liquid, but not so hot that it boils. Heat can come from a planet's sun, but it has to be near enough to receive radiation, but not so near that the radiation strips away the atmosphere. Greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide and methane can trap heat near a planet's surface. Water itself plays a role too. It can exist as clouds in the atmosphere or as snow and ice on the surface. 
snow caps tend to act as a mirror to reflect away sunlight back into space. But clouds can either trap or reflect light away depending on their height and composition. So Kite and his collaborators ran many different combinations of these factors in their simulations, looking for conditions that could cause the planet to be warm enough for at least some liquid water to exist in rivers for more than a billion years, but then abruptly lose it. But as they compared different simulations, they saw something surprising. Changing the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere didn't change the outcome. That is, the driving force of the change didn't seem to be carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a strong greenhouse gas, so it really was the leading candidate to explain the drying out of Mars, said Kite, an expert on the climates of other worlds. But these results suggest it's not so simple. There are several alternative options. The new evidence fits nicely with a scenario suggested in a 2021 study from Kite, where a layer of thin, icy clouds high in Mars's atmosphere acts like translucent greenhouse glass, trapping heat. Other scientists have suggested that if hydrogen was released from the planet's interior, it could have interacted with carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to absorb infrared light and warm the planet. We don't know what this factor is. We don't know what this factor is, but we need a lot of it to have existed to explain the results, Kite said. Therefore, there are a number of ways to try to narrow down the possible factors, and the team suggests several possible tests for NASA's Perseverance rover to perform that could reveal clues. In addition, Kite and colleague Sasha Warren are also part of the science team that will be directing NASA's Curiosity Mars rover to search for clues about why Mars dried out. They hope that these efforts, as well as measurements from Perseverance, can provide additional clues to the puzzle. Talking about living conditions on Earth, there are many forces which have combined to keep the conditions remarkably stable for millions of years. But other planets may not be so lucky. One of the many questions scientists have about other planets is exactly how lucky we are. That is, how often this confluence occurs in the universe. They hope that studying what happened to other planets, such as Mars, can yield clues about planetary climates and how many other planets out there might be habitable. It's really striking that we have this puzzle right next door, and that we're still not sure how to explain it, said Kite. So scientists have come to another conclusion explaining the lifeless situation on Mars. According to scientists, the red planet's significant transition from a warm and watery to a chilly and dry planet could have been primarily driven by greenhouse gases apart from carbon dioxide. To explain this, missions to Mars have discovered riverbanks and deltas indicating that the planet once had rivers and lakes. But a recent research says that unexpected events in the planet's deep history may have caused it to end up losing its water. As per the study, published in the journal Science Advances, the river-forming environments on early Martian surface were hot and moist at first, then wet and cold later. The researchers investigated the records of Red Planet's rivers to learn more about Mars' water and atmosphere. And this is it for today, guys. What are your thoughts on today's video? Share your views with us in the comments below. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell icon for more amazing videos about space. And thank you for watching.